very little introduction. Uh, Dan Marston works for Catalyst IT in New Zealand, uh, has been a very well known and very active developer in the middle community for, for many years. Uh, ha has worked on um, fantastic tools such as one of my favourite, the Plagiarism API, which I have badgered him about numerous times over the years, as well as being responsible, or used to be responsible for the uh, SCORM integration. Um, without trying to take away any of Dan's thunder, we are very grateful that he's found time to present, especially on a weekend. I know it's family time for you, so I'm very grateful you've had time to present for us. And the floor is yours. Thank you for coming. Yes, great. Thanks everyone for, for, for joining us. Um, if you haven't figured that out already, we're going to be talking about market allocation and, man and workflow, which is a, a feature that's going to be added to 2.6. So it's not something that's available currently, um, unless you grab the patch that's available and install it in your 2.5 install. Um, so first, as, as Julie mentioned, there's a wee bit about me on this next slide. Um, I've been doing middle development for almost nine years now. Um, <laughs> sure, sure, Julian. Um, uh, I am a senior developer at Catalyst IT and I work from a home office in Christchurch and have five wonderful great kids who are downstairs at the moment so hopefully uh, they don't interrupt and make lots of noise at some point in the session but um, if they do we'll just keep moving, it's all good. Um, okay, so marking workflow and alloc alloc marking allocation workflow is a feature that allows markers to be allocated to individual students and controls when marks are released to students and allows the markers to use a, a review cycle of a, of a student's grade. The development for this was funded by the Lightwork team from Massey University who helped develop the spec as well. Um, and I'll just go through into some uh, sort of basics of it before I get into the demo. So there are new, two new settings in the Moodle assignment when you're creating an assignment. One is use marking workflow and one is use marking allocation. The marking workflow allows a range of different workflow states. So the, and different users with different capabilities can make changes to those different states. The non-editing teacher or teachers with the assigned grade capability can use the following states, not marking, which is kind of obvious that the, the students, that the marker hasn't started doing anything, in marking, which is basically flagged to say that this particular marker has started doing some work but isn't finished. Marking completed is kind of uh, an interim stage that says uh, uh, that allows them to say I've finished marking, but I might need to go back and do some checks. I'm not quite ready to, to release the marking to the next stage. And then the in review option is um, when the mark is finished, and the person in charge of quality checking those grades can then um, view the view the, the item. Um, some users will have multiple capabilities, and these particular workflow states can be skipped, so they can go from not marking to in review straight away, or they can go not marking to another state, depending on what capabilities the user has. Um, by default, the non-editing teacher with the grading capability gets these, um, but it is a, a separate capability, so if you wanted to give different users access to do this, then you can. So it doesn't rely on the assigned grade, it's just an example to, to show you how it works by default. The teacher role, so that's someone that, that has um, a review grades capability, which is a new capability for the, the workflow, can also use the state ready for release. And that's an extra one that, that appears at the end of that list that's basically saying that the teacher's happy with it, they've reviewed the grades, and um, the next step will be to release to the students. So the good thing about this workflow state is it means that you can make changes to a user's grade and grade all of your students before allowing any of your grades to be viewable by the student. So at the moment when you're grading in the Moodle assignment, as soon as you enter a grade, that grade's available to the student, the grade with the feedback. But with the workflow states, it means that you're able to stage that a bit more so that you can grade everyone, and then when you're ready to release all of the grades, you can release all of them at once. Um, and by default, the teacher role is able to use the released workflow state as well but there's a separate capability that controls this. So that if you have multiple teachers in your course, or if you have an internal policy that says that no grades must be released until a certain date, then you can give this capability only to those only particular to give that, give that change. change. Or you can, or you can sorry, I think someone sorry, joined, I think someone joined. Sorry, I'm just gonna mute some extra people here, Teresa and some other people, I'm getting some feedback in my speakers. Um, 
So you can choose to only give that capability to some people so that you can um, restrict who's able to release grades to students. <laughs> All good through the Um, there are some restrictions on marking allocation changes. So if you're wanting to change who the marker is, then you can only do that when the actual item is in not marking state or in marking state. Um, so if you're wanting to change the allocated marker, you have to change back to one of these states before you change that. Um, I'll get into the demo very soon so that we can see. Um, there's a, a specification that we wrote. Um, <laughs> all good. Is, I'm going to start doing some screen sharing in a minute, Theresa, anyway, so um, take your time. Um, there's a specification we wrote to display that and that sort of run through what we wanted to get out of the feature. Um, there's a tracker issue which has the patch and the work that's planned to go into Little 2.6. And there's also some testing documentation there that shows you all of the instructions on, on what needs to be tested when we're, we're testing it. Um, so now all I'll do is I'll just share my screen, hopefully, and see that that works. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes, or a, a few seconds, to, to process this properly, so just bear with me while I set that up. Uses some JavaScript that has to um, load into the web browser. Hopefully any moment now it will start coming up. I'll just wait for that to, to come through properly. So this is just a standard Moodle 2.6 site, um, which is pretty much the same as Moodle 2.5 at this stage because there's um, not a lot of code that's gone on to 2.6 yet. Um, and I'm just going to add a new activity to this particular course. I'm going to add a new assignment, and I'll show you the new settings that are on the page. So this is just a standard assignment. And if we scroll down the bottom to where it says, uh, excuse the the plagiarism stuff there. I've been using this site for a few other things as well. Um, there's two extra settings here under the grade option. One is use marking workflow, and the other is use marking allocation. And there's some contextual help there too that tells you what those particular individual items are. But we'll go and show you an example of those now. So I've got two assignments set, uh, set up here at the moment, um, one that just has marking workflow enabled and the other one that has um, the marking workflow and allocation. So I'll just go into the marking workflow to start with. And we go to the Gradle submissions page to see the um, information. And those of you that are familiar with this page will see this extra uh, drop list on this page beside the grading option. Now this is the quick grading screen. When you have quick grading enabled, you can make changes to the grade directly on the screen. Um, so you can, the, the teacher can go through and view the files that they've uploaded and give them grades, and then select a marking workflow state. Now, because I'm logged in as the admin or teacher account, I can see all of the workflow states that are available to me. I can then select that this is currently in marking, and then we go down to the bottom to save grading changes as per normal quick grading options. On the same page, we have the ability to uh, filter based on the uh, marking state. So if we scroll down the bottom down here, there's an extra option here for um, workflow filter. And we can say we want to see all of the items on the screen that are in marking. And it will show us just the uh, single, uh, single assignment that's in that in marking state. We also have the ability to um, bulk change these states to a different state. So you can select all of the submissions or select some of the submissions on the page. And then with the, the, the drop-down list here that says with selected, you've got the option to set a mark flow, mark and workflow state. And that takes you to a page. Um, so it gives you a warning, you know, are you sure you want to do this? Um, and then you can set the particular marking state that you want to make for all of those users at once. So that's especially handy for the uh, option to release. So if you're going through them individually and um, you've given different grades, when you're ready to release them all, select them all and choose released to then make that grade and the feedback available to the student. Um, so that's just the basics of the, the workflow states themselves. 
But where it can be quite uh, powerful is we add this extra feature for uh, allocating individual markets. So if I go and view the, the submissions page again for this particular assignment, we've got the uh, drop down list there like we did before, but we also have the extra field here for market. And this means that we can assign this particular student to a, an individual marker to, to grade this particular assignment. Um, I should have shown you as, so that we can see the list of markers that are available here and then assign them to that particular user. If we change this to a, uh, a state like ready for release, and I'll just save that, you'll see that we can't change the allocated marker anymore for that particular assignment because it's, it's it's ready for release. Um, if we decide that we want to change that marker because something's changed, we need to go back to uh, not marked or in marking, save it, and then it will allow us to change it. What I'd like to do in future is make the quick grading page a little bit more intuitive so that if we, um, if we do that sort of thing, it just, it just makes the marker available straight away. So if we change the state here, then automatically we get the, the selector, but that's not there at the stage. Um, the, when you have quick grading disabled, so that's by unticking this box, the normal method of grading is also available. So if you go in to grade an individual student, it brings up the standing grading page, and on this grading page you get the ability to set the, um, the marking workflow state or the marker if, if you're using the, the standard grading pages instead of the quick grading options. the grading page again and again we've got those filters um, and we also have a filter for the marker so you can filter all of the results for an individual marker rather than um, showing just one person and you can combine that if you want to with the filter for the workflow so you can see all of the ones that Emily teacher hasn't marked and you can then uh, see some of that stuff sorry there's a bit of debug information there at the top so I'll need to um, trace that at some point. Um, and again, you also have the bulk change option. So if I um, get rid of the filters there, we can select some individual assignments and then we can choose to set the allocated marker for those. And again, that takes us to the, um, the bulk change page. and lets us change those particular submissions to be allocated to a different marker. Now, if I go and log in as one of those markers, I'll just make sure that we have enough assigned to one of the markers. Um, so here we have um, two items that are assigned to Emily Teacher. So I'll go and log in as Emily Teacher and show you what the interface looks for them. Emily Teacher is a, a non-editing teacher. So they're a, um, a person that doesn't have full teacher access to the course, but is able to uh, grade. I'm just going in through uh, that user to log in as them. And going into the assignment two, and to view all the submissions. What you'll see here is it doesn't show all of the submissions for the class. It only shows the users that are allocated to this individual marker. So you can see that this marker is allocated to students and quick grading is turned off. So if I turn quick grading on, it'll let us uh, see uh, make changes. So this user can set a grade and they can set it to being marked and completed, but they can't set it any higher than that. They only have the three states that are available to them because they're a non-editing teacher and by default the capabilities given to them only allow them to do the initial marking. So they can set this as marking completed and they can set this one here as marking completed and save it. And if we go back to that view grading page, you'll see that there's nothing for them to, to see. That's because there's nothing in their queue or and nothing that they are required to do. Um, so I'm not sure whether this is going to suit everyone 
for by, by saying everyone, meaning that the assignments no longer show to this particular user because uh, they're not able to make any changes. Um, so it'll be interesting to, to get feedback from people using it and hearing whether they still want to see those and see them in, in the state that they are, but not allow them to change them. Yeah, I, I, I think markers could probably still have their people displayed at some point too. But I think we'll probably add that in a, in a future option, I'd imagine. Um, but if we now then go back in as the teacher, I'm just using the admin user now because it's just an easy um, one for me to use. And now as the teacher goes back in, um, they can see the list of assignments that are submitted here. And they can see that Emily teacher, oh, that's interesting, there's actually a bug there, I think. Um, that might be why the teacher's not show, it's not showing on the um, on the on the grading page. What's supposed to show here is these are supposed to show Emily teacher, and and uh, you can see that they're marking completed. So as the teacher can the teacher can come in and go, oh, marking completed. They can look at that grade. They can open up the file. They can decide whether they're happy with the feedback and happy with the rest of it, and they can say, great, that's ready for release, or if you're doing a, a, a more detailed workflow play, sort of state, you would individually look at each individual item. So they might go, I'm going to look at this one first and place it into review and look at it. And, and when they're happy with it, they would then bounce it to ready for release. And they'd go through each individual user and, and make those changes. And when they were finally happy with everything, they would um, use the bulk change or they would individually release items and save the, the grading at the bottom. That's quite good. We've found a bug that um, that I need to fix later on, so I'm just going to take a note of that now. Um, um, and the plan, sorry, I was just reading the, the backlog now as well. Student only gets to see the grade. Yeah, that's right. So the student doesn't get to see anything. They don't see feedback, they don't see grades until the teacher or whoever has access shifts the workflow state to release. Um, and uh, they won't see it until their individual item is set to release. And if you've released it and then you decide, in fact, no, I don't want to show that to them anymore, you can go back to ready for release and it will, will hide that from the interface. Um, so that's the basic sort of demo. It's a, it's a pretty quick um, sort of run through on, on the features. Um, and apart from the, the bug we saw there, uh, has anyone got any other questions or, or feedback? Um, it may be a bit of a short session today. Yeah, the markers should see their mark students too. I think, I thought that's how it was supposed to be working, to be honest, but I need to go back and check that and check the spec and check how we did it. But um, there's obviously a bug there and it's not saving the, um, the marker correctly. Is it a capability for the students to see their marked students? Uh, I'm not sure if you're, what you mean, are you talking about after they've um, sent the mark and completed? Yeah, so when the marker sets the marking completed, they should still be able to see those individual um, students, but not be able to change the grade. So once it's in that marking completed state, the, the non-editing teacher by default or the marker would no longer be able to make changes unless the reviewing teacher said, no, in fact, that's not right, and bounced it back to um, a previous state like uh, in marking and sent the, the, the marker uh, an email saying, hey, you need to have another look at this one, it's not quite right. Um, but they're not, uh, unless they have the, the capability to bounce through the other marking states. Yeah, it's been quite, it's quite common requests from, from what I remember back even to, to Moodle 1.5 is being able to selectively release everyone's marks at once rather than having to do them one by one. Um, having one student notified in class and then and then two days later the last student notified is, is quite a long period and students can get uh, a bit uh, 
impatient <laughs> for having to wait for the great history. What do you mean by the grade history, Stuart? You're talking about um, the various changes to the grade that the, the individual teacher makes? Uh, I don't think this makes any changes. No, it doesn't make any changes to the logs that, that go through, but we could easily fix that as part of this code, potentially. Um, But it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't change any of the existing grading history. It just it just makes those individual changes. Does it? Any other questions? Uh, Teresa is asking. Does it just keep record of the score? Um, It does partly in the logs, Christina, but it's not as clear as it possibly needs to. There's some other uh, bugs and improvements in the tracker, I think, related to uh, displaying who the grader was correctly to the students. Um, it's there in the data, but it doesn't necessarily display it to the user very easily, partly because you've got multiple graders here. You've got the original person that's assigned as the marker, but then you also have the, the the normal teachers doing the reviewing, which may make changes to the grade as well. So potentially you could have multiple people modifying that grade. Um, it's not just a matter of, the, in this, this process, you're no longer tied to a single grading person. It, it's a, it's a team-based approach. Um, or it could be. You, you could use this as a team-based approach, or you could just have one person in the, in the assignment using the, the workflow. Well, the, the, the marker is supposed to stay there. There's a bug there where it's like um, on the screen here. This is supposed to still say Emily teacher. Um, you only assign a single individual marker to an individual student. So if you've done that, it should still be there. Um, but it's just disappeared. Um, just a bit of a bug there in the interface, I think. Um, possibly on the, the editing page um, that saves the grade on the um, editing for teachers page. Um, but I need to, to follow that up. It should be an easy fix. There's also um, talk about making some of these uh, workflow state changes a bit more automated. So if you wanted to have, for example, when the, um, if I just change this one here to uh, marking completed, I'll just save that just for the moment. There was some initial talk about making this still available as a drop down. And if the marker changed, then we would change the marking status automatically to in marking. So we'd drop it back from marking completed to in marking. But I wanted to avoid any hidden automatic changes on the first release because they're quite difficult to explain sometimes. And this feature is, is I mean, there's, there's lots of workflow states and it can take a bit to sort of get your head around the process involved and the best way to use it. So I wanted to avoid anything that could be um, hidden from the, from the user's display initially. Everyone seems pretty quiet. There doesn't seem to be any, any questions. If I've missed, um, if there's some people that have come in a bit late, I can go through some of the um, the workflow again. Um, I didn't keep an eye on who was in the room when I started, um, but if you missed some of the early stuff, just let me know in the chat, and I can go through that again because we do have a bit of time here. Cool. Okay. Um, so. I'll just go to the first one initially. There's, there's kind of two settings. One is enable marking workflow, 
and the second one is ma enable marking allocation. And the workflow is just those four, those states. So if we go into this individual assignment, this one's got just the marking workflow enabled. And it adds this extra, sorry, I've just gone too far, it adds this extra drop list to each individual item. And you can go through this process depending on how you want to manage it in the course. Non-editing teachers only get these three workflow states to begin with. They don't get the other options. So a, a non-editing teacher would go in and use those three work states and then the teacher responsible for reviewing that could then go and review those that are marking completed, change them in review or release them to the students. And so the students don't get to see the grade until all the feedback until this is released. We also have the ability to bulk change those options. So if you select individual ones here, you can then choose to set the marking workflow state to be released or not marked or, or any of the other options. And you can also filter the page. So you can filter it based on what, uh, the, the workflow state. So you can see only the, the not marked if you wanted to or only the, the, the ones that are in a particular state. Um, and then the other option is the uh, work so uh, the marking allocation, and that's when you allocate an individual user to grade an individual assignment. So these particular ones here, um, oh sorry, I've got a, um, a filter there at the moment, so I'll just remove the filter. So you can go through and assign, uh, right. I've just lost my um, uh, connection there to the to the browser, so I'm just gonna. Uh, I presume you can still hear me, but I can't see anything anymore. So I'm going to try something else here. Uh, just keeping my microphone down. Yes, we can still. Well, I've got the last slide you did before you disappeared, and we can still hear you. So we'll just wait for you to uh, come back yeah. in, and I'll give you the rights. Right. I've got, um, I've called in on the, the voice line instead of using the um, big blue button chat for voice. Um, but I'm just going into, hopefully. But I'm not entirely sure what you're going to be able to see here on the screen, so I'm going to have to um, play a bit. Hopefully you've got something coming back now. But you can see about that much. And I was talking about the allocation at that point, I think. kind of lost, lost my train when I lost the, um, the machine, just died. I'm not sure why, but I've just um, gone onto another machine. Okay, so these are the these are the, the ones that are allocated to individual users. So you can see these particular two assignments are allocated to the Justin teacher role. And Justin teacher is a non-editing teacher. So I can go and log in as Justin teacher and show you um, what they see. Sorry, Paula, I've just muted your mic. Not sure if that was um, intentional noise. So I'm now uh, I'm now logged in as the Justin Teacher account, and if I go and view the uh, submissions, I can only see the items allocated to me as the marker and I can go and make changes to those individual assignments and set the workflow state. And if I change it to being marking completed, 
then I'm not able to make any changes to that um, assignment until, unless the, the, the main teacher account bounces it back to in marking or not marked. So hopefully that's a, a another quick um, run through of the basics of the, the settings. Um, to me, one of the big big wins is being able to release the grades to students. Um, but hopefully the, the workflow states and the marking allocation will also be really useful for, for some people as well. Yeah, screen sharing is a wee bit slow. It's, it, it takes something like one frame per, per second or two seconds or something. Um, I can't remember exactly which one. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, ideally this should be in middle 2.6 pretty soon, but at the moment it's still sitting in a separate patch um, waiting for the 2.5 cycle to settle down a little bit before changes go into 2.6. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the demo. That's the, um, the, the basics of the feature. Um, there's more information on the, um, the different pages I'll link to inside the uh, iMoot course. I've linked those inside the iMoot course too, so if you go back into the, um, the course, uh, you'll see the link to the specification and the link to the documentation on the, uh, oh, the sorry, the, the tracker issue and the testing instructions, and those are all there. So hopefully it's, it's going to be a useful feature for people to use, and thanks to the, the Massey Lightwork team for funding the, funding the work. Cool. Thanks everyone for, for coming. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of the iMOOC. There's still many more sessions to come. Julian might know a bit more about how many more sessions. Well, obviously it's my job to quickly jump in by saying thank you, just to add a thank you for ourselves. Uh, again, I'm a, I'm a, I can't work from home with just one child busting in, so how you've done with so many, I'm extremely surprised, or you must have a very strong lock. Um, thank you for presenting. Um, this is the first I've actually seen of this development as well, and it's fantastic, and I can't wait to see it. Is it something you can patch in 2.5, did you say? Yes, yeah, the patch is there for 2.5. It, it sits pretty nicely. I designed it for middle 2.5 to start with, um, but we didn't get it in time because the, the release cycle changed to 2.5 and became a month earlier than, than planned. So we, we didn't quite make it in time, but it's, it's there ready to use on top of 2.5 if you want to. Fantastic. Well, thanks again. I'm going to start playing with it now. I think many people want to. And uh, we'll see you around the traps. Thank you again for coming. Cool. Thanks, everyone.